Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. This video is a little bit different than my other videos, but still covers the same kind of basis, salvaging things and building things from salvaged products. So anyways, this video is mainly about uh, where I salvage stuff. This is just a tiny portion of a bunch of metal I just salvaged just recently. And so I go into a lot of detail of kind of places to look for metal and salvage material and kind of how to handle it when you get there, talking to the people and stuff like that to get the stuff for cheap to free. If you're interested in the video, stick around, check it out. And uh, a little added bonus, I dug this thing out of an old storage shed. I made this about 15 years ago. It's a fruit press for uh, pressing cider and stuff, but it's made out of tractor uh, shipping crates for Kubota tractors. So if you're interested in the video, stick around, check it out. Hey guys, it's Michael here. Uh, Weather is crap today. I'm getting tired of the shit snow. Shoveled a lot lately and plowed a lot of snow. Anyways, um, got some metal I just salvaged. Yesterday was totally sunny and nice. Today it's totally snowing. Anyways, uh, we'll pull this out of the car. I've salvaged all this just recently. And uh, we'll pull this out of the car, put it in my shop, and we'll go for a little bit about salvaging. <laughs> Alright, so I salvaged all this metal yesterday. I've gone to the same source a few different times for metal. And it's really nice. You get shorter pieces, uh, two, three feet, but super useful for my applications. Right, it's so nice to have a little bit of extra metal. And I could have got this stuff all for free here, but I offered to give the guy 10 bucks just to be thankful for the material and to let me salvage through the scrap pile. I'll bring you guys in a little closer and show you what I got here and talk a little bit more where I sourced this stuff out and where you can source some of these metals at. These are pretty neat. They're really thin gauge, but they're the little stuff that they bent on a box brake or a, a metal brake. I don't have a metal brake. I'd like to get one down the road, but these are super nice little structural pieces I can use for various different things in the sawmill and different stuff. Got some nice tubing here. And uh, a bunch of these were not regular angle iron. They're pretty thick. I'm not sure the gauge of them, 3 16ths or something like that. Uh, but they're pretty nice. They've been also bent on the brake. Cool parts like this, I will definitely use them for something. It's nice to have. A little of this. A bunch of super heavy duty angle iron here. And kind of neat pieces like this. You just don't really get very often. This has all been bent. Um, some little plates of sheet steel. Some flat bar. Various different types of flat bar, 3 16 This stuff's pretty thick. I think it's 3 8 That's about 16, 18 inches long. I don't have much of this around, so it's useful just to have a little bit for various projects. Some pretty thick wall tubing, more angle iron, a bunch of flat plate here that's been cut with some angles on it, but it's like two feet long. I got, I don't know, eight of those or something. Uh, super useful, and with the plasma torch now that I have, I can rip all this stuff down and turn it into different shapes and pieces. And I grabbed this stuff because, again, I don't have a brake. And you never know when you might need a special piece of metal like that or adapt it to something. So I grabbed that kind of stuff. So I got all this stuff from a fab shop close to my work. And they're always doing big, big jobs. So this is just junk scrap to them. But it's useful for guys like you and I um, just around our shop. Like I said, he said I could have any steel out of the steel bin, their, their scrap bin, for free. I always like to slip them a few bucks. I could give them 10 bucks this time just because it's so useful to have this stuff and it's worth it to me to get it in all the various different sizes. I don't need 20 foot sticks of this stuff. A lot of times it's nice just to have a little bin where you can dig through and find little bits and pieces for your project. He does, however, charge for stainless steel and aluminum because he uh, recycles that, but his prices are like you know, super cheap, 20 cents a pound or whatever. Uh, and it's more just like eyeball. Uh, how about a few bucks for that? So I did get a, last time I was there, I did buy a little bit of stainless tubing from him for uh, doing some lathe work and stuff like that. But this is one source, you know, fabrication shops, establish a good relationship, be respectful, you know, treat the people nice and don't be like, oh, I loaded this extra shit up in my car that they didn't say I could take. Don't do that stuff. Be respectful on it and ask before and talk with people and uh you know they if they can trust you digging around their shop or their out pile and know that you're not taking stuff they told you not to take then you'll be able to come back numerous times you know it's just all about being respectful and establish a relationship with them another thing is this guy that does this has this big fabrication shop he's always ordering large quantities of metal and there's a few metal suppliers in the area that have to truck the metal out here and one of the suppliers i never ordered from because you had to have like a 300 dollars minimum order or you got charged a lot for shipping this dude is nice enough to let me just have a metal order right into his place and they just unload it with their forklift because they're getting metal every week there. So I can call up the metal company that we order from and order like two or three sticks, gets put on the truck and gets unloaded there and they don't have a problem. And uh, he understands I appreciate it and he's a good dude. 
Um, another thing to consider is this fabrication shop in particular, they have much better prices if I do need to just go to them and buy a piece of metal, uh, rather than some of the other shops around here seem like they double the price on it. Like uh, hardware slash tractor shops have had like large bundles of metal out there. You can go dig through the metal yard, but the prices are outrageous. You only buy a few feet because that's when you're in a pinch and you need it. This guy in particular said, hey man, I barely marked this stuff up. So if you need a piece of steel, like a one and a half by one and a half inch square tubing, 20 foot stick, come talk with me. I always have that stuff on hand. I barely mark it up. So something to consider if you're looking to buy metal, different spots to kind of source it out. Uh, we'll go into a few more spots, talk about salvaging some other places. All right, one other thing I want to go over. I was talking to the owner of the fabrication shop and he pointed out a good good piece of advice. And that's like, if you just come from the beach, you got flip flops on and shorts, it's not gonna let you salvage, you know? It's like one of those things you gotta dress appropriate. So um, yeah, make sure you have good footwear. Don't be rolling in with flip flops and uh, shorts on, you know? Make sure that uh, you got good leather gloves on and safety glasses. So if you're gonna roll in there, make sure you don't get hurt. It's the last thing they want to deal with is somebody cutting their hand open on a scrap piece of metal. So you come in there with shorts and t-shirt on and bare hands, you're probably going to get turned away from most places. So again, that's kind of comes along the lines of being respectful, respectful of their business. So uh, that's another little tip for that one. So uh, one other thing, if you go to a fab shop and you can kind of tell the guys don't want you to salvage or they sell it flat out, just say, no, nah, sorry, it's too much of a liability to have you dig and throw a metal bin. You might say, hey man, I'll give you 10 bucks so you can buy yourself some lunch if you pretty much ask an employee to just go grab you a few arm loads of their scrap metal. So, you know, they're employed there. They should be able to dig through the bin and if they'll help you out or they won't, but it's worth a try. And another thing is if you're working on a project or you just learn how to weld and you're just looking for metal for work welding, you say, hey man, I'm just learning how to weld and I'm looking for some scrap metal. Uh, they might be more interested in hooking you up with it too for that, knowing that you're just learning. Or like I said, uh, I built a bandsaw mill. So if you rolled into a place like that and kind of shared with them a little tidbit of information, like I'm building a bandsaw mill and trying to keep the cost down and I need some scrap metal. If you share a little project with them, they might warm up to you a little more and be a little more interested in what you're doing and uh, try to help out for a good cause. So something else to pay attention to. All right, I did a video about a year and a half ago about I think it's like 10 tips and tricks on building a bandsaw mill. And uh, it's pretty useful information if you're going to build a mill, but it also covers a lot more than just mill building. It covers about seeking out parts and pieces and salvaging, letting your friends know what you're looking for so they can look for stuff for you. You know, I've salvaged like various different things kind of halfway to the goal. A lot of stuff like that, like pallet rack, and I used some of that for my bands on the rack. And uh, it covers a lot of things about salvaging and taking on bigger projects and not giving, getting overwhelmed by it, by taking on small portions of the project and focusing on that and bringing it all together at the end to make a full mill. So anyways, it's not, you know, it's about a bandsaw mills, but it's much more than that. So if you guys are interested, there's going to be a link right up here. So check that video out as well. Another good spot to point out is uh, in the local area around here, we actually have two metal recycling yards. And uh, I think most areas are going to, you would probably seek something like this out where you can bring your scrap metal and drop it off of there. You don't get very much for it unless it's like aluminum or stainless, you'll get something for. But uh, those places also sell at scrap prices usually or just barely above scrap prices. So uh, you can go in there and instead of just being like raw chunks of steel like this, we're great for being building and stuff like that. You can actually find more components, machines, and all kinds of stuff from burned up forklifts to stainless steel augers. And kind of depends on what industrial zones in your area. They usually scrap from industrial places like mills and things like that. But you know, there's sometimes insane stuff. If you're in a sculpture building, especially, there's some really cool stuff you can find there. Um, and I don't go into those places that often. I drop off a little metal from time to time, but it's another good spot to look if you guys are looking for something. Uh, downside is sometimes you have to have a torch to get, you know, cut parts off or a uh, Sawzall and different things like that. So you gotta kind of come equipped. So a lot of stuff isn't just easily hauled out of there without removing it from something else. But definitely another good spot to check is uh, metal recycling yards. Now that we're on the subject of salvaging, like in this video, I figure I might as well dig this out. I pulled it out of an old uh, outbuilding and the wood's getting all mildewy. I'm gonna have to replace that. But I built this thing like 15 years ago. And at the time I didn't have almost any metal. I just had a cheap Harbor Freight 90 amp flux wire, wire feed. And uh, it stuck together just fine. Maybe not the prettiest welds, but it worked. But I built it for pretty much next to nothing. Um, it's an apple press. I was at the time making a lot of fruit wines and I needed a way to press fruit. And so I was kind of thinking outside the box, you know, you got your traditional one with but wood slats and a metal band and kind of got excited about building something and trying to figure out how I could do it for cheap. And uh, all the framework on here actually got from a hardware store. They uh, also sold tractors there. 
and they sold metal and things like that. And I was trying to get metal for cheap to free. I asked them if they had like a scrap bin. And the guy pointed me over. I can't remember if he charged me anything for it. If it was, it was super cheap. He might have given it to me. But I got a few sticks of this stuff. Um, it's actually Kubota tractor crates. Uh, they get chipped in and then they get bolted together and these crates get cut up. So if you're at an area where there's a lot of agricultural equipment getting shipped in, uh, sometimes like I got a backhoe a few years back from my tractor and it came in an angle iron shipping crate and I was able to cut the angle iron up and use it for other things. So somewhere else to keep in mind if there's somebody that's shipping in a lot of stuff like that, you might be able to get some of their old crate material from them. But to go into a little more talk about this, I got the jack from a wrecking yard out of the back of an old car. It's uh, it's not a hydraulic jack. Hydraulic jacks won't work upside down like this. It's just a gear reduction jack. And I got a little spade bit I modified and you can put it in here and, and thread it down real quick with a uh, impact gun or not an impact gun, but maybe a drill. And I stopped by a local plumbing shop and asked them if they had any big um, water line. And they gave me a section about four feet long. It had some cracks in it, but they gave it to me. It's a big, like, I don't know, six inch diameter PVC tube. Drilled some holes in it, and I have another little piece of wood that comes down on top of it. Wrap the stuff in cheesecloth and a little fruit press. Last but not least, I would say one of a really good source of finding stuff is uh, let your friends know what you're looking for. Friends are a good source to find things. Um, not only is it more eyes out there looking for what you need, like maybe they say so-and-so and one of my buddies has, uh, turns out they have a bunch of metal in their backyard. They're cleaning up some stuff around their place and they're happy to get rid of it for free. You never know. So just word of mouth, let people know what you're looking for. Another thing is a lot of my friends and I, we don't really keep tabs on each other, what we're giving each other. It's just kind of like, even though the item might have value, it doesn't have, we're not going to take our friend's money. We're just going to give them something and we're not going to keep tabs and, oh, I gave you that, you owe me something in return. What goes around comes around and uh, if you take care of your friends, they take care of you. It's just one of those things. It's a good way to roll. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of cool stuff that way through friends. I've given a lot of good stuff away that I know they need. Uh, for instance, like my bandsaw mill, one of my neighbors knew that I was going to be building a mill. He hooked me up with the motor for it. Something he had sitting around his garage for like five years, wasn't doing anything with it. Was happy to have a mill in the area. And then in return, I've milled him so much cedar as a thank you. We're always trading back and forth. I get a bunch of logs from him. I give him some cedar back. I keep some cedar. So the thing is take care of your friends and they'll take care of you. And uh, it's kind of one of those nice things about having good friends. Um, anyways, if I do a part two, if I think about some more stuff that I might've forgot to add in this video, I'll do a link up here to another video. But until then, thanks for checking out the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit like and subscribe. See you next time. Take care. Bye.